Champions Mojo is part of the CG Sports Network. Welcome to Champions Mojo, a podcast to bring out your inner champion. Your hosts are sisters-in-law, Kelly Palace and Maria Parker. Kelly is a former Division I head swim coach, Olympic trials qualifier, and holds national and world records in master swimming. Maria holds world records in endurance cycling and won the world's toughest bike race, Race Across America. Both are certified health and life coaches. Our goal is to inspire you through conversations with champions. And now your host, Kelly Palace. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo podcast. And as usual, I am co-hosting with Maria Parker. Hello, Maria. Hi, Kelly. It's good to be with you today. Oh, it's great to be with you. And Maria, I am super excited about our guest today. It is the Canadian Olympic champion, gold medalist, Penny Alexiak. Penny earned her spot on the Canadian Olympic team as a 15-year-old. She's actually the youngest. Aren't you, Penny, the youngest Olympic champion in um, Canadian history? From what I've been told, I think so. I mean, yeah. I, I don't keep track of it, but I guess <laughs> that so. Is, that is <laughs> just, amazing. It's just amazing. And <laughs> at the Rio Olympics, we saw Penny win the gold medal, actually tie with Simone Manuel in the 100 free, and she won silver in the 100 butterfly. So super talented here. She anchored the Canadian 4x100 free relay to a bronze and also that team to a bronze in the 4x2 free relay to become the first Canadian to win four medals in a single Olympic Games. But before we start in-depth talking with Penny Maria, can you give us a little bit more about Penny? Sure, Kelly. Uh, Penny came to swimming at a relatively old nine, <laughs> nine years old, and, and then made really quick progress. She uh, started swimming for the Toronto Swim Club under coach Bill O'Toole and started racking up medals. But she was raised in an athletic family. Alexiak's brother plays professional hockey for the Dallas Stars, and her sister was a competitive swimmer at Northeastern University. Penny has also recently become sponsored by the Phelps brand, and we're really looking forward to talking with Penny today. So without further delay, we'll bring her in. Penny, welcome to Champions Mojo. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be yeah. here. It's so great to have you. So sure um, let's just start out. We've, we've got quite a few great questions for you. Um, how are you now? What, what are you doing? What have you been doing in the quarantine? How has that time period been for you? Um, I would say now I'm doing very well. I'm training on a pretty much regular training schedule and we have access to most of our resources right now, which is super awesome for swimming. But um, my normal kind of day-to-day life is just at the pool or at my apartment. And right now, Toronto is currently in like, we have some closures and things, so we don't have access to our weight room. So it's also my weight room is also my apartment. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Very cool. You were quarantining for a while. I read a little bit. Was that hard and you weren't able to get into the water? Um, yeah, we were in full like lockdown quarantine in Toronto for about three months and it was definitely different. I mean, I think I adjusted to it and at first it was nice to kind of have that break and I was living at my apartment with my best friend and my boyfriend and we would literally wake up in the morning, eat such good food, work out, kind of just do our own thing every day. And it was nice to do that. But I think after a while, I was kind of getting a little antsy and I just wanted to get in a pool. So I'm glad that I'm finally back to regular swimming again. Wonderful. So tell us about this exciting partnership with the Phelps brand. Yeah, um, this has kind of been a long time in the making, I would say. I mean, not super long, but I'd say like about a year-ish because we were supposed to announce me joining the team, I want to say sometime around like February, March kind of time. And it just couldn't happen because of COVID. They had a whole plan for it and it just had to keep getting extended and extended. And all I wanted to do was announce that I was finally joining a suit brand. And it's just, I couldn't be happier joining the Phelps team. And when they reached out to us and when I got to sit down with Lindsay on the team and talk to her and kind of learn what Phelps is about and what they want the brand to be and how they want to grow and who they kind of want on the team and everything. It it was all things that really resonated with me and 
were things that I also stand for and I care about and how I want to grow as an athlete and as a person in the next few years is kind of the same path that they're on as a brand. So I'm just really excited to be a part of the family now and get to work alongside Michael. And I'm literally able to text and call him whenever I want for advice, which is super awesome too, because it's Michael Phelps. Who the heck gets to talk to Michael Phelps whenever <laughs> yeah. they want? Like, oh yeah. yeah, yes. I was wondering Absolutely. how, if it's been fun, you know, getting to know him. And um, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure you just idolized him. Yeah. Um, growing up, I really, really, really idolized him. Like I never watched female swimming ever. I would only watch Michael Phelps race. And I remember in 2012 at the Olympics, he was doing 200 fly, I think. And my mom literally called me downstairs while I was doing homework. And she made me sat, sit down in the living room and watch the twin and fly and she's like you need to swim like him you need to swim like a boy you need to get like power like a boy like my mom was so insistent on swimming like a boy and swimming big and everything like that and I don't know I kind of I would say I kind of swim sort of like him I swim my races a little bit like he does and it's just crazy that now I get to like talk to him and meet him and I got to go to dinner with him and stuff like that and talk about swimming, talk about life, talk about mental health. Like he's an amazing person to learn from, especially in the swimming like area. I couldn't ask for anyone better to kind of mentor me through it. We what read, are some of those, um, what are some of the shared values that you have with the Phelps brand? Like yeah. you liked about it? Well, one of the main things is that Phelps brand is really big on making swimming accessible to people of like any kind of range of swimming, I guess, and kind of anyone from rec swimmers to lane swimmers to people that are literally just going swimming in their pool in their backyard to kids, to adults, to competitive swimmers, to everyone. And I am really, really big on everyone having access to things, whether it's sport, whether it's school, whether it's kind of anything. And I'm especially, big on people having access to swimming and I think that learning to swim is such a big thing and I think not just for learning to swim and like for sport more so just for life safety kind of and water safety and that's a big thing for me and the fact that Phelps makes a point of making swimming accessible for everyone they have goggles for literally anyone that wants to swim they have suits for anyone that wants to swim they have amazing competitive suits for athletes they have everything so when I got to like sit down and talk with them and learn about the brand I was just really excited and also it's not like an intimidating brand it's not something that you're scared to go into the store and you don't know what to buy you go into the store you like a pair of goggles they're a cute color you can pick them up and they're easy to take with you like I love that that's accessible too. I, I read, we, we read that you, he suggested the book, The Power of Now, and that you read yeah. it a bunch during quarantine. Tell, tell me why that meant so much to you and what, what, you know, what the takeaways for you. Tell us that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I know Michael like reads a lot of books and he definitely has a lot to say himself. So, I mean, when he suggested a book for me to read and it was kind of in a time when I was struggling a little bit. I was getting really frustrated with kind of like how everything was going for me. I feel like a lot of people have that where they'll just have moments where nothing's going their way and they get really frustrated and down about it. And I called him up and I was talking to him about it. And he's like, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You need to read this book. And then afterwards, tell me how you feel about your situation and like what you're going through right now. And I read the book and it really just opened my eyes to appreciating what I have right now and appreciating where I am right now and not so much worrying about what's gonna happen in the future. So now I kind of just take things a little bit slower day by day and I kind of let things happen how they are supposed to around me instead of trying to control the future when I can't control anything other than what I'm doing currently. <laughs> That's very great. good. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, competitions are pretty 
uh, slim right now for everyone. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, we, we follow and interview a lot of uh, NCAA athletes and yeah. I've had, I've uh, thought about your, your meets and things up there. So what, what are your opportunities to swim meets up there? And then on, as a follow-up question, um, are you in university and did you ever consider any USA universities? Um, well, for the first part of the question right now in Canada, we don't have any swim meets going on. So that's why half of our team right now at the Ontario High Performance Center um, is at ISL, but the other half just wanted to stay back and wanted to kind of train through the year. And so our coach, we're really lucky because we train at an amazing facility. We have two 50 meter pools, a whole dive wow. tank, like full stands around, like it's amazing. So much deck space. It's like constantly sparkling clean. It's mm. insane. Nice. Um, and it was the center for the Pan Am games in 2015. So we get to use that competition pool literally day in, day out, every single day. And so our coach is able to set up days where we can go in and we can put on our racing suits and we they'll put in touch pads in the water for us in a couple lanes and we can do racing efforts. So we'll do like hundred free maxes against like four other girls that are like top 50 in the world. So honestly, there's no complaints there for racing, but um, I mean, it would also be nice to get out there and race people like Sarah and Simone and everyone like that, but we don't have access to that right now. But um, I am currently not in university. I was kind of going to look into it more after the Olympics and then they got extended. So now I'm waiting for after the next year, hopefully I'm gonna start looking into it, but um, I'm not sure about university just yet. I'm a little, I'm holding back as much as my mom doesn't want me to. <laughs> um, but for US universities, it was definitely a big discussion in my house when I was like 16 after the Olympics, my mom was like, you have to go to a US university, you have to do NCAA. And I was just so swamped with everything that was happening in my life after the Olympics that I could not see myself like Go, like taking off and going to a university right away especially in the states because just in Canada I had so much going on I was like traveling I was doing interviews I was doing photo shoots it was a little bit crazy and hectic for me so for now I am not sure where I'm gonna go to university but it's gonna get figured out eventually very nice well I I would love to have you tell us about your actual the moment you touched the wall in mm -hmm. Rio and looked up and saw the number one next to your name. Now, I don't know. I'd love to hear, did you see the number one next to Simone's lane or were there two number ones or like, what was the, the, you know, the five seconds that went through your head when you realized you're the Olympic champion and then follow that up with, I'm a tied Olympic champion. Yeah. Um, it was, insane i remember i touched the wall and i literally stopped and i didn't want to turn around right away i think like, <laughs> it was a big thing here everyone was talking about it they were like it took you pretty much like a minute to like look at the wall <laughs> That's funny. Um, but i touched and i just was trying to catch my breath and calm myself down because i just did 100 free and i put my head down the last 25 meters pretty much and i was just telling myself while I was trying to catch my breath I was like okay you've had a really good meet and you cannot be disappointed with whatever place you just came because at the wall I knew I flipped turns like pretty much last because I pushed wow. off the wall and I saw on the kicks that I was behind everyone so I touched the wall and I was like you put everything you could into that race you cannot complain you have three Olympic medals everything's going to be okay. And I turned around and I saw on the blocks, they have like little lights and it says like, it doesn't say anything, but there's like three lights on every block. And if you come for a second, third, it'll light up. And Simone was 
three lanes over from me and hers was first. And then beside her, I think was Sarah and hers had two. And then Kate Campbell beside her had three. So I was like, okay, I didn't get a medal obviously. So I turned around and I started reading from number eight on the <laughs> board. And I worked my way up and I went to seven, I went to six, to five, to four, to three, to two, and to one. And I was just so like in awe and shocked. And it was just super crazy. I couldn't believe it in the moment. Oh, that's such a great <laughs> in-depth story. story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as, Thank as, you. Those are good details. Yeah. As much as I know about swimming, I, I've never heard any Olympian explain the, the lights on the blocks. And no, so, I so, yeah, vividly remember it all. It was crazy. <laughs> so from there, uh, your life, you're 16 years old when you win that. And you're a young 16 because you're born in June. This is August. You're, you know, you're just barely 16. And yeah. from there, kind of take us on that um, first, you know, several weeks after you won that and what you know what was going through your mind and what you learned from that experience penny um i mean in the first couple of weeks i definitely didn't learn a lot i was kind of just <laughs> i was confused walking around toronto wondering why people were staring at me and my friends would like be like why are you staring at my friend like they were all standing up for me and stuff but um I think everyone was a little confused and a little bit just no one knew what to do. There was camera crews showing up to my high school and me and my friends would be driving in from lunch with like music blasting and they'd want to interview us like <laughs> a bunch of like 16, 17 year olds coming back from lunch in high school. Like I just had pizza. There's nothing exciting about it, you know, so I was just really I was really confused the first couple of weeks after. I didn't know what to do. I didn't really know how to carry myself that well just because I'm a 16-year-old. Like, I'm living my life, doing my own thing. I'm trying to be normal. I'm trying to make friends, figure out who I want to be as a person. But um, I think as time went on and now, like, four years later, I think I've learned a lot and I think I've changed completely as a person I wouldn't say I was a bad person or anything before but I'd say I've experienced a lot more now and I've got to go to Kenya and stay there for 10 days with my family and my best friend and learn about the culture there and learn about what everyone there is so appreciative of that we aren't here and I've got to meet so many people I've met like David Suzuki I've met insane people that I never thought I would ever meet in my life and I think I've learned to be a lot more appreciative of everything that I have in my life because some days I'll just be sitting in bed and I'm like why the heck am I 20 years old in my own apartment meeting all these people I have Michael Phelps's phone number like <laughs> why the heck am I here right now and I just take a minute to kind of just think about it and really take it all in. That's great. I, I, I've i heard already two characteristics of champions as you've talked. One is this just gratitude, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful expression. And the other is, you know, the story about just knowing like that you weren't ready to go to university when your mom was really pushing you. It's hard to say no. Yeah. Um, and, and so what other characteristics do you think champions have? Um, I mean, I feel like I've met a lot of amazing, amazing athletes and amazing, amazing people. And I think everyone I've met that is so great at what they do is so humble. Like, I've met people that, like, literally will praise me. And I'm like, why the heck are you giving me any praise? Like, you are an amazing athlete, amazing person. Like, it's just so wild to me. And every like champion, I guess that I know is like, super just sweet and grateful. And they're always genuinely such a good person. And I as far as I know, everyone is just so like, like you kind of said appreciative, and they have so much gratitude. And it's just, I don't know, I feel like every champion I've kind of met is so nice. Like, that's all I can really say. <laughs> We, well, that, we would that, agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> we would totally agree with you. But but when you get in the water and you, you know, you swim to win, 
it's not about gratitude necessarily yeah. or even about being nice. What is what else is there? I, yeah, I, 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 would, I would I would say. like to follow up that with what characteristics do you have, Penny, that you think got you to the top of the podium? Like in the last couple of years before Rio, what are you know a couple of characteristics that you have that got you there? Um I think I just have a certain kind of like drive and a certain want. I always talk about a lot of the time it's not about who's better and who it has like the biggest muscles, who has the best speed, who has whatever. I always just talk about it's about who wants it more at the end of the day because if you dive in the pool and you are just thinking, okay, it's another gold medal, then the person two lanes over from you that has no gold medals and all they want is this Olympic gold medal is going to find a way to try and beat you. And I just always talk about the fact that sometimes it's, I'd say most of the time, it's about who wants it more. How is your, I want to now, I want it now. Are you, do you have that as you practice every day? And Yeah, I mean, I'd say there's definitely some days where I'm like, do I want it? Do I like want to wake up this morning and go to the pool and work really hard and come home dead? But um, I'd say for the most part, I definitely spend a lot of time thinking about how much I want world records, how much I want more like medals, how much I want to get my times to like certain times that are lower and how much I want like to like be able to perfect my stroke to make sure that like it is could be the most perfect stroke like in female swimming that's things that I want and people always ask me like okay after you got your olympic medals what are you striving for now and I always say that I'm like well there's more medals out there there's more there's <laughs> world records I don't have a single world record I want one like crazy so I'm just gonna keep working until I can get more and more and more and more that's great Beautiful. that's a great answer yeah. <laughs> I, I read that your mom was a swimmer how has that impacted your career your life your yeah um my mom was a swimmer when she was younger she never really like pressured any of us into swimming never none of us ever really tried it out um I was a dancer. I did like ballet. I did rhythmic gymnastics. I did gymnastics. I did all sorts of kind of random things that had nothing to do with swimming. My brother did hockey, like all growing up. My sister did figure skating, rowing, dance, everything. And I just one day wanted to quit dance. And my mom told me I had to pick something to do because she <laughs> was like, we're not dealing with you having a crazy amount of energy at home. And um, I just chose swimming and I was terrible at it. And I remember my mom trying to teach me and my sister how to do butterfly in the lake and I did not know how to do it. I like was awful. And then my mom took me to a bunch of competitive swim club teams and they kept asking me to do different strokes and I barely knew what breaststroke was. I didn't know what kick was. Like I was so confused and one day I just had a coach take me in and I, from then on, loved swimming and I kept working to try and be the best that I could be at it. Great. So you're obviously working hard in the pool. You wake up or, you know, doing fitness and weights in your uh, strength training in your own living room there. What are you doing for your mindset? Um, yeah, that I'm in the process of, i constantly trying to figure out ways to improve things and I think right now I'm in the process of kind of switching up how I want to improve my mental performance and how I can go about that so I was really into reading over quarantine and that helped kind of calm my mind and then I got very into just listening to music and I would love to just lay in bed or sit in my living room and listen to music and that was super good for me but now I'm kind of in a transitional stage where I'm looking at different apps, I'm looking at different programs I can do that'll help not only kind of ease my mind and help with mental like 
improvement and everything like that but I also want to kind of be able to train my mind to think a certain way so I can achieve certain things and do you do you do mental rehearsal or um, visualization or any of that um I do more so around when I'm racing I like to do that but um right now I think kind of because I don't have any races I haven't been doing that a lot and that's something that I'm kind of looking into that and like a big thing everyone's in, into right now is like manifestation and kind of training your brain to think certain ways so you can attract like positive vibes and everything and things that you want so yeah that's sure i i'm curious it sounds like or i got the idea when you were talking about listening to music and reading that maybe you had some anxiety and that helped calm you is is that what was that what you were referring to? Yeah, I think especially over COVID and over quarantine, I think a big thing for a lot of people was just kind of losing their sense of self and their identity almost because when swimmers go into a pool every single day and twice a day and they're doing so much work all the time and their mind's constantly on swimming and all anyone asks them about is how's practice, how's swimming going, I think we identify as swimmers and if someone were to ask us what do you do I'm a swimmer mm. and being in quarantine and everything and not going to practice every day and not coming home and my boyfriend or my friend asking me how was practice I kind of lost that sense of self and my identity almost and I struggled with the fact that I didn't identify as a swimmer over those three months and I didn't know how long it was going to go on for I didn't know am I going to go a year without being a swimmer? And after that, will I be a swimmer? I was kind of stressing about things in the future that I had no control over. And that's kind of when I was talking to Michael and when he recommended me the book and when my mindset kind of changed on things. So I'm sure you're familiar with the beautiful documentary, The Weight of Gold, after, mm -hmm. you know, that Michael narrated and was so involved in what were your did have you had um mental health challenges after winning gold did you have the weight of gold or how how has your mental health been um i think i definitely struggled a lot after the olympics i mean the year first year afterwards it's an incredible high like it's literally the only way is up and everyone wants to meet you everyone wants to talk to you um everyone is just talking about like how great you were at the Olympics and it's so amazing but kind of as you get further away from the Olympics and as you start racing more and maybe like I found for me the first year after the Olympics my mindset switched from like training all the time all the time all the time that's all I knew and I could go to school and kind of do my own thing and that's everything I did to now it's like, okay, after practice today, instead of a nap, I have three interviews I have to do or like, you know, it, my mindset kind of changed from swimming and just having fun with that and focusing on that to more of like a business aspect of things and how, how do I have to grow my brand? How do I have to post on Instagram mm -hmm. so that my followers will like keep following me and that my following grows? Like it's a whole different mindset from what I was used to when I was 15 years old and especially having that switch when you're in high school when you're just figuring out who you are when you're just figuring out who your friends are and then for me that was a big thing was I had so many people that wanted to be friends with me and when you're 16 and you're trying to figure out who your true friends are and then you have all these people that just want to know you because you're quote-unquote famous like <laughs> It, it was a whole thing for me. And I think as also you move away from the Olympics and 2017 worlds, I didn't race as well as I did in 2016. And it was a whole thing. Why didn't Penny Alexia swim as well as she did in 2016? And then every time I would go to a swim meet and I'd do a hundred free, uh, the announcers would announce me as Olympic gold medalist. And for me, it was a big thing. I was like, I need to perform. I need to prove myself every time I do a hundred meters free because I won it at the Olympics. And it kind of became a pressure for me where it was like, 
I won then and they're announcing that I was the winner then I have to win now and now I look at it as more of a confidence booster than a pressure and now when I step up and they announce that I'm an Olympic gold medalist I'm like I am an Olympic gold medalist and right now I'm gonna get in the water and I'm gonna try my best and if I come dead last in a provincials heat 100 free okay I'm gonna go back to the drawing board try again you know like that didn't happen but I mean like (laughs) if it did I've kind of learned to not really have as much like pressure behind the Olympics anymore and more so it's kind of a confidence thing now and it it it's all about just changing my mindset and controlling what I can I guess that is staying in the now yeah Yeah. that's really beautiful and I think great advice you know because yeah you know when when you've been a winner it's great to be a winner right Mm -hmm. (laughs) but then when when you've been a winner yeah this like it feels like there's yeah there's tremendous pressure yeah and, and I love how you know you're you're able to change that from a negative pressure to a positive pressure yeah I'm exactly. good I was good and I'll probably be good <laughs> yeah that's great and then you you had a little bit of a tough year in 2017 weren't you injured something about a medicine ball can you tell us about that I was oh, so curious goodness. when I read that I was like how what happened <laughs> I I don't know if it I don't even know how many times this has happened to me <laughs> but we don't even do it anymore at the pool. Like we completely stopped doing it. We would do um, like sit-ups with medicine balls and it would go over your head and you'd throw it to the trainer. And then on the way down, you'd catch it and go back. And I think it happened to me twice or maybe it happened three times, but I would go back and the medicine ball slipped through my hands and hit me in my head. And my head hit like the tile oh, on the ground. Oh as my, I was oh my gosh. So I got like two concussions like that. And medicine ball concussions. Yeah. Oh, how terrible. <laughs> I know. It was not fun. Yeah, yeah medicine so you, balls are heavy. I mean, yeah, those I things know. are, and you were probably using some pretty heavy medicine balls. So yeah, I'd say I'm sure they're, they're saying down. stay away from the medicine balls, Penny. Do yeah, not come to the medicine yeah, balls. Yeah. I'm taking that out of my fitness routine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's being a success so young, and kind of a surprise success. Uh, you know, you've described trying to figure out who you are. It's been four, more than four years now since, since then, you know, and, and you're complete, like you said, you're a completely different person. And I just want to encourage you that you have your whole life to become who you are. I'm 57 yeah. and I'm still trying to figure it out. So. No, for sure. <laughs> but, but what, you know, what are your other hobbies? And like you said before, it was just school, sound like pizza and swimming. Uh, and then, and then it was uh, swimming and interviews and, and, you know, what, is, yeah. what are your hobbies? Do you have hobbies now outside of swimming? Um, now I'd say I'm kind of outside of swimming. I'm really into kind of like fashion and design kind of oh. stuff. I mean, I don't know, like you kind of saw my apartment. I'm really into interior design and I love like buying furniture and kind of updating my apartment. I literally moved from my old apartment to this apartment because I was like, I need a change of scenery. I need to redecorate a whole new apartment. (laughs) I was like, I love changing up like fashion and my apartment and everything like that. It's, It's just so fun for me. And it kind of keeps my mind busy when I'm outside of training. I can come home and my apartment's so cozy and calm and I can just chill and it's so nice. <laughs> nice. We, you're talking to two interior design <laughs> lovers like Maria really? and I, that's probably two of our passions. So yeah. what are, what are your, some of your favorite um, room designs? Like I see you've got a white couch, which we love. <laughs> um, and what else? Like what, what are some of the things that you make yeah. you feel really? Yeah. Um, do you like modern? Good? Do you like, yeah, yeah, eclectic? What's your? Um, I kind of just like modern kind of like minimalist vibe just because when I come home, I really just want to be able to calm down and have the space around me be calm and chill and everything. Any kind of colors I add is very like pastel and just nice to kind of, I don't know when I walk around my apartment I just feel so like it's so clean and I love it (laughs) oh that's so nice so you've created I mean I I just moved and I realized how important order and beauty around me was important because for you know when you move at first it's just crazy oh I hate it (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so you are so on to something you know to be able to come home to a, a space that calms you and feels beautiful to you is is probably really good for your good for you 
That's how it's Have you it. heard of feng shui, Penny? Yeah, yeah. I remember. So, yeah, so go ahead, I, tell us. What are your I, thoughts no, on this feng is shui? just so funny because me and my friend Sarah Darcel, she was on the Canadian swim team and the junior team, I think it was 2015. And I can't remember, I think we were in Australia or something and we would always be roommates. And we'd walk into our hotel rooms and we'd be like, feng shui. And then we'd put like a floor <laughs> lamp on a desk and we'd like move the like beds around and the couch. We'd like put it upside down and we'd be like feng shui like for everything. <laughs> I don't know why we ever did that, but we'd just make a mess of hotel rooms and then be like, it's different. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Mm. Feng shui is, I mean, you know, it's a means wind and water, but it, it is the energy in a room. And it sounds like yeah. you're very connected to that. And that's beautiful because it can help you sleep better. It can help you feel better. So yeah. wonderful. No. Very, very nice. So what other, it sounds like you, you like order, you like minimalism. What other routines or rituals in your life lead, you know, just in the last, you know, six years that have led you to such success that you know, standard things that you do. And, you know, I have stupid things like I, you know, I make my bed and I have to oh, exercise early in the day. And like, tell us some of the things that make Penny's world, your, your routines. Um, a hundred percent. My bed has to be made every morning. Like I, whenever anyone stays over my boyfriend, my best friend, anything, if they stay over and I have practice the next morning and I'm waking up before them, if I come home and the bed isn't made, it's like the worst <laughs> thing in the world to me. And I kid you not, I will think about it all through practice. I'm like, I wonder if they're awake. I wonder if they made the bed. Like if the bed's not made, I, it's, I don't know why. It literally is disturbing to me. Like I have to have my bed made and I have to like know that it's made. <laughs> and I think that's like, what makes my world turn is my bed being made. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything else? Uh, so are you, are you generally uh, a neat, neat person or? Yeah, you must be. I minimalist. would say for the most part, I want to be neat all the time, <laughs> but I will let my apartment become a complete mess. And then if I'm ever like anxious or anything, I feel like when, as the mess builds up, my anxiety builds up and <laughs> then one day I'm just like, I need to clean everything. And I, I think this happened like a couple of days ago, like two or three days ago, I woke up for practice and practice was at nine 30 and I woke up at like eight o'clock and I got ready and everything. And my apartment was a mess. And at eight 30, and I usually leave at nine at eight 30, I just decided to clean my entire apartment and I cleaned my whole apartment. I vacuumed, I swept, I wiped the floors, I put all the laundry away in like 30 minutes and then I left. I did like all the dishes and everything. It was, I'm very, how, how did you sometimes feel? Sometimes how did you feel I after you did all that? I felt amazing. I came home from practice and I just like laid down and it was the best thing. Ever. <laughs> Probably had a great practice because of that. Exactly. So, so, you know, what you're young, but you know, you've, you've had some challenges and obstacles. What, what can you tell us about one of your biggest obstacles and, and how you kind of got through that? Um, I think kind of my biggest obstacle that I have gotten through and I'm still kind of working to get through is like just the mental health aspect and kind of just day by day, like I said, I'll get anxiety over my apartment being messy. I'll get anxiety over going to practice and knowing that I don't have any swim meets this year until as far as I know the Olympics. And I think especially when I was younger, I struggled a lot, like I said, with not knowing who my real friends were and figuring that out. I think mental health has always been a thing for me, especially in the last few years. I don't think it was something I really noticed a lot as a kid. I think I did have anxiety growing up and I think it was something that was always kind of like bothering me, but I never knew and I never really got it checked out. And then when the Olympics happened, it was like an overwhelming kind of anxiety. And I was really frustrated over not being able to control things that were completely out of my control. And I would put so much stress on things that I should not have stressed over at all. I remember one time in grade nine, 
I skipped a pool class. We had like swimming class at school and I skipped it because I had two practices that day and I got in trouble for skipping class, obviously. And I literally could not stop thinking about it for like months because I was like, how could I skip a class? How Like I had anxiety over that. Like I think it was just, it's something that I've like struggled with a lot and I'm very open about it. I'm very open about the fact that I struggle, but I also am good sometimes. Sometimes I'm not. And it's something I'm constantly trying to figure out. And I feel like a lot of people are constantly trying to figure it out. It's something that's ever changing and you never know how long it's going to last. It could last my whole life. And it's something that I'm just going to have to learn to kind of deal with or suppress or work around. And for me, that's okay. As long as I have good people around me that are supporting me and good people that are helping me, which I do. And I'm very grateful for that. I love that. I love your authenticity around that. I really, we really appreciate that. And you're right. I mean, having a name for it, like those obsessive thoughts that you had around skipping practice, having a yeah. name for it is so helpful, isn't it? Okay. That was anxiety. That was, yeah, you know, that wasn't exactly. a normal, you know, response to that, to skipping practice. So thank you well, so much for sharing that. Yes. Thank you. And you're in good company and you the are. more, you know, that people of your, um, caliber and celebrity talk about it, then the more that, you know, cause millions of people suffer from anxiety and certainly yeah. even in the pandemic, it's been made worse by, you know, by the pandemic. So a lot of people are so, so that is, it's really brave and authentic and you're going to help so many people, Penny. And we, we know that your boyfriend's cooking food for you after <laughs> practice. So you're probably starving. So we have one last question before we do our, what we call our sprinter round of fun. Um, yeah. And the last question is, is there anything that we have not asked you that you would like to share with uh, our audience? I'm not sure. I don't think there's anything. I feel like we've covered so much. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you've done, you've done an amazing job. So yeah, let's this. get to the, the fun stuff. This is just silly. It helps um, listeners get to know you a little bit better. Maybe yeah. they want to know, you know, if you like chocolate or maybe you don't, or if you're a cat <laughs> or a dog person, but um so we, uh, we had an interesting, uh, we had an interesting, uh, inquiry from one of our listeners. And when we say we're going to go, um, sprint around and we just, I, I'm going to give you a few and then Maria's going to ask you a few questions, but on my segment, you're simply giving one or two of the answers. And so we're asking red or blue and somebody thought that was political. So in the U S <laughs> If you're red, you know, you're Republican. If you're blue, you're Democrat. But that is uh, not, not, <laughs> not what we're talking about. We're just like, we're talking purely, simply color. Yeah. So um, are you ready, Penny? Yes. Okay. Cat or dog? Dogs. <laughs> red or blue? Blue. Milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Um, milk chocolate. Kickboard or no kickboard? Kickboard 100%. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Okay, mountains or beach? Mm, I think beach. Football, baseball, or soccer? Oh, I don't watch any of those basketball. <laughs> okay, basketball. basketball. Yeah, that's, that's a great a answer. One. Great answer. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Coffee or tea? Uh, tea. Morning person or night out? Neither. I'm neither. Not neither. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny because most people say both, uh, but I've never, I don't have we, Maria, have we ever had anybody say neither? That's hilarious. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm okay. a kind of person. Okay. Last one for me. Um, fingernail polish or no fingernail polish? I always have my nails done, so fingernail polish. Okay. Nice. nice. Okay, here's mine. Uh, what's your favorite color? Um, blue. Favorite pizza topping? I love Hawaiian pizza. Like, love oh, it. I love it. <laughs> Favorite vegetable? Um, celery. Oh my gosh. That's a first. That is a first. Really? I love it. I, love <laughs> yeah. celery. I think we already know the answer. What's your favorite swim complex? <laughs> what do you mean? Where, uh, that you've swum. You swim in a lot of swim complexes. Oh, around. oh, oh. I, th I thought you meant like as a person. Um, probably the Pan Am Center. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Um, do you have a pre-race playlist? Um, I listen to a lot of like really aggressive rap 
like people literally oh, wow. screaming in my face. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love That's it. That's surprising. I like it. I think it's great. And it <laughs> drowns out the, the scary voices in your head, right? Exactly. <laughs> What's your shoe size? Uh, nine and a half. Okay. And I know you have siblings. Can you, how many siblings? Um, I have five siblings in total, two half siblings and two full siblings. Oh, nice. Uh, do you have a favorite Star Wars character? Um, I think Yoda. I love okay. oh, that's Yoda. Yeah, my dog like, looks like it. Yoda. <laughs> I love Yoda. Um, and I know your boyfriend is cooking for you right now, but can you cook? Um, I'm gonna say yes. He'll probably say no. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So when you first dive into the water, like uh, at a big event or something, what word comes to mind or feeling? Um, I think when I first dive in, the first word that comes to mind is kick, because I'm just like, kick as hard as you can right now off this dive. <laughs> great, great answer. It's been working for you. So. It, has, it has. Yeah. Well, Penny, thank you so thank much. You so much. It's been such a great interview. Getting to know you, you're just an authentic person and champion. And thank you. Really, Keep doing really what you're doing. Home. It's a journey. Yeah. You got your whole life. Yeah. Thank, you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Take care. Just take care. Bye-bye. Takeaways, takeaways, takeaways. We've heard from you that your favorite section of our podcast is the takeaways. Thank you so much for that feedback. But before we get to the takeaways today, we wanted to ask you if you would please give us a five-star review. That way, more people will be able to find our podcast Also, if you could subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify, you'll never miss a podcast episode if you subscribe. And please share our podcast with your friends. And now, the takeaways. Awesome, Maria. Wow. (laughs) In our little break there where we gather up our takeaways, we're like, how lucky are we to to get to visit with someone like Penny Alexia? Yeah. Alexiak. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't gotten to do it. We've we've taken a little bit of a break because for several reasons but um yeah i I was just yeah it's like oh this is so fun i am so fortunate so and what a beautiful i mean spiritually and physically of course beautiful person she is and 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 how wonderful it was to chat with her my first takeaway was um you know just how for such a young person how self-aware she is i mean i don't think at her age I knew half about myself that she is beginning to understand. And, and that was really demonstrated, you know, even when she was 16 and her mom was really pressuring her to, to, you know, to go to college, to go to university in in the U S and she just knew that she could not manage that. And she was able to use the power of no um, to say no. So, and, and, and throughout the conversation, it was threaded with things that she has learned about herself. So I, I, I think, um, Trade champions, self-aware. What about you, Kelly? Yes, very self-aware. I, I liked also when she, you know, she at her her caliber, her level, she could have picked any swimsuit brand in the world. She could have picked anyone. And I like that she really aligned with the Phelps brand. You know, she was aware this is a brand that I'm really aligned with. And so yeah, super self-aware. And uh, I just, I love that. And I think for me, the very first takeaway ties into that nicely, which is super authentic, just yeah. very authentic with who she is. You know, she's, she, she comes in for the interview. She's like, oh, I didn't know we were doing video. And she's got <laughs> wet hair and a bun and wearing a sweatshirt, but she's, hey, this is me. I'm sitting in my living room. We said, hey, if you want some time to go, you know, do hair and makeup, we'll wait for you. But no, this is me. And, you know, I, I, I loved that. I loved that um, she shared with us some of her struggles with anxiety and yes. um, that, you know, so, so just putting herself out there, I loved, and I think she is going to reach a lot of people and a lot of people are going to be relate, going to be able to relate to what she's talking about. And, and the more authentic she is, I think the more successful she's going to be anyway, because it just, you know, it just feels more comfortable. So yeah, yeah, like exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. The story she tells and that she, yeah, she was extremely authentic and, um, and I agree. 
that if she continues to grow in that, she will be an amazing um, inspiration to people. And, you know, her stories are great. And, and that also leads to my next takeaway, which is just how humble she was, which is sort of tied to authenticity. Because when you're authentic, you're talking about things that are good and then things that are bad. And so she, she was just incredibly you know, humble about her experience. She recognized humility in other champions. She, yeah, she, she, I, I just, I, I think that, that makes her, you know, you know, the awareness, first of all, that, that, that people who succeed are humble was, was great. And then just, you know, hearing the humility throughout her, you know, storytelling and, um, and about her stories. I love the story about, you know, just catching her breath and not looking at the scoreboard. Right. And, yes. and the little talk she was giving to herself about it's going to be okay. I, I did the best I could, and it doesn't really right. matter what the scoreboard says. I, I just thought, you know, it was it was a beautiful and humble story. It's a beautiful. Um, I, I love that. So, what was your? Yes, very. I, I think she recognized humility in other champions because yeah. it's a natural trait of for of her. her. And, That's right. And for and and to think it's such to be so successful at such a young age, she had every, she has every reason to be totally stuck up and she's so not. Yeah. So that was, that was beautiful. My last takeaway, which I think may be the most powerful, uh, let's say the most powerful tool in her tool bag to be a champion was when we asked her what got Penny to the top of the podium at the Olympics. And she said, desire, yeah. you know, she really, she really wants it. And she yeah. believes that no matter, you know, shoe size, hand size, height, that um, it's the heart of the champion. It's yeah. that that desire to win. So you don't have to be, you know, six foot two. And I mean, it helps, but, um, sure. you know, there are certainly small people that make the NBA and, you know, gigantic people that are horse jockeys. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, she, she even you know, said, it's not about physicality as much as, as it is about that desire, that mental capacity to really want it. So I think that passion that she has for being the best, she really wants a world record. And I love how she talked about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah I don't you know, have she, a world record yet. I really want a world record. <laughs> yeah. So just, just wanting it, I think, you know, is, is a great, um, trait that she naturally has and certainly shares with other champions yeah and there's so many other beautiful things that she said um so listen to the whole interview because yeah we just do two each it's so. a treasure it's a treasure it she a was treasure. terrific yeah all right maria i love you so love much you thanks too, for Kelly. What, a, what a great interview really yeah. appreciate the time yeah. with you yeah me too love you bye-bye love you too bye you've been listening to the champions mojo podcast with host kelly palace and maria parker Champions Mojo is produced by Cabra Media, and a new episode debuts every Tuesday. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Follow Champions Mojo on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Champions Mojo.